His main research interest was in developing nanotechnology-enabled diagnostic and therapeutic solutions for cancer and genetic diseases. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mehmet, for, for the opportunity in uh, Tarasaki. Tarasa uh, and, and yeah, on my, on my slide, to see uh, this YouTube used, used to be the home of uh, former, former Tarasaki Institute. Uh, in case a lab located and my lab is on the other side of the building. So yeah, delighted uh, to be here and would like would like to share with our latest latest progress on, on our, our nanotechnology uh, liquid bio platform and with a very focused topic uh, emphasis on the topic of uh, non-invasive pre prenatal. So I have to go over this uh, I call the reality, and, and this is my disclosure. So two companies are uh, spun out from my lab at the UCLA, and, and currently one, the one the one we call the Sina Technology Corporate ETC is actually in the field of liquid biology. So and I de declare uh, there is a conflict, and I often do to to go to for my presentation for God analogy. Knowledge is on the, the dynamo, the gene force behind the technology and the, the work I'm going to share with you. So these are my members, uh, and I will recognize them when I approach to their their work. And we definitely have to have to appreciate show our appreci appreciation support from NIH. Uh, currently, we have have uh, nine active the uh, R1 R21 grants, uh, which I serve as uh, either. PI or co, or co investing. And this is, this is a roadmap. So, so basically, what codes will be trenched into three sections. Uh, so, the first section I'm going to share with you the term nano vehicle, which is the, text, the technology we over the past 40, 14 years. Uh, and that's, that's allowed us uh, to isolate and characterize um, circulating rare cells uh, in the blood. Yeah, I'm going to simply share, share with you by applying, applying we call second generation device. We are able to, to isolate the cell, then perform non-invasive prenatal diagnostic application. application. And that piece of work, the work actually attracted quite some attention. Um, I will kind of, kind of review how that work was, was done, then quick, quickly link to a new branch of that of the application. Now we could apply very, very similar technology for the for the purpose of uh, diagnosis of uh, a, a prenatal disease called placenta, placenta pretestron disorder. The, then I'll wrap up my talk at, at the end. Okay, so we'd like to first share with you 14 years of history of the tech, uh, platform technology, technology called Nocro chips. chips. And it has to do with, with uh, that the general one of the three components in the field of liquid biopsy. And roughly about 14 years, years ago, we generate our interest try to explore for the use of a nano material to facilitate the isolation and characterization of circulating tumor cells. And that was and that was coincidentally later, later in 2016. Identified as one of the very, very important tech, uh, by MIT technology review called Breakthrough of the Year in 2015. Actually, we started work actually 10 years before this uh, 2015. 15, uh, and I have to uh, show, uh, recognize the uh, support uh, from this uh, CCNE, that is the Nanotechnology uh, Excellence Center, um, Spunk National Cancer Institute. And we we this program was was launched in two thousand and five, and we were were very group uh, involved involved in that uh, program, and we still in that program at this moment. Uh, although the uh, program went through uh, several several rounds of uh, structuring, and we've been very been very lucky was up in uh, White House White House Cancer Moonlight, and actually the initiative was. Um, Oh, was was uh, was led by by the vice president at time, uh, then and now he's our, he's our president. This um, pretty pretty soon, okay. Once he take care of those uh, main issues, and I think he's going to draw his attention back to cancer 
Moonshot Moonshot project. And so and so that call from NC NCI give us a very, a very sufficient, I mean very good resources to help our nano velcro chip. So over the past 14 years, and our technology evolved from first first generation all the way to now. Now we have a fifth generation technology. The first generation technology allows us to pull down those rare cells. And initially, of course, our target work was circulating tumor cells. And first generation allowed allow it and to, to, to start study morphology of those circulating, circulating tumor cells to the microscopy. Copy. Second generation in combination with the use of uh, um, laser capture microscopy technology, we could isolate, isolate the singulating cells. Then also to perform from very sophisticated sing, single cell genome analysis. From three to fifth generation, those are the generation technology allow batch purification circulating tumor, tumor cells. And today I'm going to switch my kind of a move my focus from circulating tumor cells and emphasize our application and on first, second generation for pre diagnostic purposes. And for those who are, who are interested in our technology development uh, history, and I would suggest you look at this, uh, uh, our advanced, advanced material article in, two, in 2020. And so from the other angle of technology development, actually it's our first paper published and we observe a very interesting move in the in the nano material. People just like us start to start to exp the use of use of nano structure the structure the material try to take advantage of the large surface area morphology for the purpose of a rare cell isolation. So actually, uh, we we somewhere near the field field. And delighted to share with share with you our material uh, uh, paper, which I call also with uh, uh, Dr. Ya Zhenzhu, who is a system professor in my department. So uh, I will encourage you, encourage you to look at. Uh... Oh, okay, okay. So connect. So there is the issue of echoing. Uh, yes, there's a little issue. Can you unplug and? Uh, plug your uh, microphone. Hello, is it better? Yes. So you think uh, no longer. It's better. Go ahead, go ahead. It's better now. Let's go ahead. Wonderful. So, uh, well, okay, okay. So let me back to this, this review article. I encourage you to, uh, uh, if you are interested in our development history, please look up this uh, review article. And so, just want, just want to give flavor how, how the this is quote unquote, you know, you know build chips works for isolation of circulating tumor cells. And then I will use our first generation technology as example. And we actually, uh, assigned the beginning of my, my, my disclosure. So the technology, technology actually now licenses the company, Lumina, and this uh, latest ver version of commercial the platform. As you can see, this are uh, the silicon wafer, uh, well, I should say a pattern, the silicon wafer chips, and that allows uh, allow us to include a nano structure, structure look like this. And, and then top, we have a P PDMS component. And on the surface of the chip, we call the capture agent that is an antibody recognized a epithelial cell or um, um, the, um, that uh, uh, for most cancer cells, they are, they are epithelial cell origin. So we use, uh, Epicam as a capture agent to facilitate cell capture and with the help, the help of the structure. And so this is a, a, a good image. Okay. So I, I like it very much. Um, so kind of a recapitulate the how, the how, how mechanism works. works. And so if you allow, you allow me, you see, uh, if you, mini, you miniaturize you like a, a, a cell, when the blood that um, flows the device, the, the herringbone of the ceiling of the device will generate helical flow that allows cells cells to bump and down inside. 
So if you, so if you already come, this the nano structure substrate make the substrate stickier and more specific. And if we allow cell to bounce up and down more than 30 times, that's a way how we eat. 95% plus the cell efficiency within nano velcro -pro device. So once the cell came onto the substrate, we could just simply detach the upper piece of a PDMS component that was embedded the herringbone bone the channel. Then the cell, the cell will be mobilized. The, the cell of in, in this case circulating tumor cell be immobilized on the substrate. Then we could simply put it glued on top of a, a well, well, typical pathology glass. Then we could just could just treat this a pathology sample, and we could put it under for a microscope. And now we have automated scanning and the cell identification capacity building. So this is, so this is just example image image showing a uh, um, well. Now those angel carcinoma circling tumor cells uh, from a patient we recruited in Guangzhou so in China. In China. And his, his circling cell tumor cells in, in red, now in red, and can be identified and can be kept captured and identified on our device. This actually allows us to measure systemic tumor burden by counting, counting the number cell. And we, and we could use it to monitor tumor burden patient. And then, like so, you could see, or you could use to monitor disease progression or treatment responses, and so on. So, with that capacity in mind, we actually start to, re to realize, uh, and we are very, we are very different from the players in the in the field. You definitely have to recognize uh, people who use magnetic beads or even beads technology to isolate circulating tumor cells. In fact, the very first, first FDA approved the uh, 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 CA today, which is, which is a basic magnetic beads. beads. And there's a, the pretty issue recognized by the field is uh, an, as a cell enter the ENT process, you could see the epicam surface marker on the cancer cell or cell was start to decay as part of the, EM, the EMT process. And, and down regulation or down expression of this surface marker will lead to severe decreasing of the cell capture efficiency efficiency. And this is kind of in kind of intrinsic problem, cannot be fully fixed and challenged by many researchers. The other category of the CTC enrichment technology people developed in the past is they use they use a size the sorting. Again, cancer start to, to progress. And many of the can cancer reduce their size at the, the later stage of these. And for example, in prostate cancer, we it's not as a small cell phenotype, and same as a lung cancer. And those cancer cells, cancer cells sometimes a smaller morph morphology than other cells. So this approach will not be able to cure those advanced stage of a cancer cancer cell in the blood. And our technology actually actually address the problem. Then we don't need the down, the down, well, the down of the epicam expression. We don't see compromise of cell capture efficiency. Okay, and small of a cell actually get captured better barriers in our device. We attribute this one and to the to this called build function. And let me remind you, you we create this uh, nano structure on our chips. And one, the other thing is very important is um, the cancer cell surface, surface flat with this uh, myelite structure. So cell, mem uh, cell membrane, the su surface of cell membrane actually are very hairy. So you could consider the hairy cell surface versus our nanowire embedded the uh, nano velcro chip, pro chip in like the, the function of pro. The tank of, of Velcro versus the cell microvilli, and what will enhance uh, increase the cell substrate surface area area um, area. In contrast, if a cell to a flat flat surface, and they will have a li limited surface cake area, thus they will be limited by the expression of the surface marker on the cancer cell, and that's very unique advantage of our system. 
all the issues you still post. Do you have a second microphone you could use? And I know this is very, very annoying. Um, HR, uh, so is it possible to use your laptop microphone? Laptop Michael. Yeah, just disconnect your microphone. Just talk to your laptop. Is that and possible? Yes, let me log in. Saying thank you for and and that may be a good idea. Got my system. Quite some time. Could you let me? I join with, with my laptop. Um, okay. So um, they say it's better now. It's much better. Can you continue? So let us see if this can work out. Okay. Uh, well, one possibility is I lower my audio voice. No, no, no. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Let's just continue. Okay. Okay, okay so just let me know anytime if the echo is still happening, okay? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, then on the switch here of uh, what uh, I share with you, with you that the mechanism and the, the, the phone development of the nano Velcro ASA, then, um, here I'm sharing with you how we advance it to the application of unsafe prenatal dental diagnosis. So I hope I already convinced you um, that the nano vehicle assay can be used, be used to enrich chocolates uh, circ circulating tumors, and they have a very, very small number of the cell in, in the blood circulate. And because we utilize, we take advantage of a nano substrate, which interacts with uh, uh, microvilli structure cell membrane. I really, really like this piece of cartoon image. And so you could appreciate it if you can see the, and I think this may not be a perfect, perfect analogy. Uh, the ut uterus with a uh, fetus li living there. The, the function is also like a tumor, okay? So fetus is possibly to penetrate into the blood circulation. In fact, that's a case. Um, I mean, the phenomenon, phenomenon already been for 50 years. years. So we're looking to apply the same, the same technology for the purpose of uh, fetal cell characterization. And this is a kind of a quick summary of how, how fetal cell was used for prenatal diagnostics. And you have uh, two category of, of uh, approach. The, the first category is on the left hand side. Right? You could use the invasive procedure, punch a hole on the abdomen of the uh, expectant mother. You you collect you neural know, fluid, then place the fetal cell cells within. And the limitation is yeah, yeah, it's invasive. And second, this cannot be done before 16 weeks of self registration. A turn approach is even, even more invasive. 
also can be conducted in the, in the relatively early age of uh, pregnancy. Uh, chronic villus sampling have to go through vagina, then invade into the uterus to collect the uh, plasma tissue. Then they carry out either the fish matron or this uh, so karyotype align the DNA to detect uh, genetic abnormal, for example, trisome Down syndrome. Alternative methods uh, in a non invasive manner, you could use ultrasound plus uh, serum marker uh, measurement. But the problem, problem is that uh, oftentimes can cause a very hard false positivity rate. So the con contemporary method is to collect fetal DNA in the maternal blood circulation. But due to the uh, also high false positive rate, this method can, can only be used for this, for this purpose. You still have to, you have to go back to easy procedure for your for formative uh, diagnosis. So we are thinking, can we utilize this non-invasive the fetal cell technology? find both advantages uh, and going through, through non easy procedure have confirmative diagnostic decision. So quickly, quickly review. Circling the DNA technology been around for uh, the, the first approval concept was that was a demonstrated by uh, Dr. Dr. Dennis Law in uh, Hong Kong Chinese, Chinese University in 1997. Within 14 years, the technology become, become widely available. Now this is a standard screening, screening technology. We use a fetal detail DNA in the blood to detect, detect Down syndrome, SOMI, or, or even other genetic abnormality. And so, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of this session, session now, we want to analyze a fetal cell, fetal cell for diagnosis of fetal disease, uh, genetic abnormality. And they actually uh, is a kind of well-known the fetal maternal cell trafficking characteristic. And you do see fetal cells in the maternal cell circulation. And there are four categories of a circulating fetal cells. And we, we pick circulating trophoblasts as a cell as our proof of concept demonstration because they share almost identical surface like a circulating tumor cells. And this is the whole history. And circulating fetal cells, cells actually was, was observed, detected much earlier in 1969 by a very, very simple method. Simply have a male, male test. If you could de detect the cell with Y chromosome, chromosome, know that's a fetal, fetal cell. It's more than half a century to see this phenomenon. However, over the past half centuries of development, you just don't you just don't see this energy become re reliable if to, to serve as a diagnostic pre prenatal diagnosed purpose. In fact, very recently, led by Dr. Baudet and two of his paper, showing the index of very sophisticated signal picking technology, where they can use a magnetic based sorting method to collect a circulating truffle plus the cell. That's a cell broke apart, apart from the uh, placenta and is part of fetal, fetal cells. And so they could, they could use it for detecting genetic abnormality and i.e. Down syndrome are most common thing, the uh, genetic abnormality. And we can, can we, can we utilize second generation single cell picking technology, which was originally detect, uh, developed for characterization of a single circulating tumor cells. As you could see in, in this paper published in 2020, we were able to isolate circulating tumor cells from uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, liver cancer patients and support. And working with, with Dr. Kian, he actually was very, very, I mean, he built up the capacity of a liver tumor transplantation program at the UCLA. So the time he gave us a tube of blood, he oftentimes have a piece of a, a matching tissue, collect almost a right, a right uh, it's just almost at, almost at the, the timing. So see the calculation of uh, the, uh, our second generation technology was able to isolate single circulating tumor cells 
then perform whole genome sequencing, and you could see the genetic alteration of the DNA copy number, copy number vari vari variation. Actually, you could see this match with so many tumor very, very well. Give us a good evidence and support. This is a circling tumor, so actually indeed came from the, tu the tumor site, share similar, similar genetic structure. So by doing the same technology, we are thinking to, to apply it to isolate circulating trophic blood cell, and which is part of the fetal, the fetal cell released from, from plasma. And we, and we could use our necro with the capacity can be, be operated in conjunction with the, the laser microsection technology. Then once the single cell is isolated, we use it to do fish microarray or, or whole genome to identify genetic abnormality in the both cell, in the fetus. So generally it's you use only four a meal of blood. In each meal of blood, we have a good reproducibility to I one meal of the blood to I one to three single circulating gene trophic blood cells. And then a little bit technology component. This is how we make those uh, imprinted the nano velcro because we want to adopt a little bit of the micro dissection purpose. So, so the say will have to, to be compatible with the uh, later dissection slides. So, in order to do so, so we adopt this uh, nano imprinting technology to print nano features onto a laser dissection slide to see cell in cell immobilized very well, well on the uh, implant nano substrate. And you also appreciate this velcro function can be, be visualized and cell V like shoot out, grab on top of a nano structure on the, on the um, substrate. And so this general workflow flow, we could draw the, the blood from actin mothers, then the blood can be shipped to UCLA, and we have a blood sample coming to us from Florida, Florida, from New York State, state. And, and over overnight shipping to our facility, collect the PPNC, shoot into our device to immobilize the cell, then takes 30 minutes to isolate individual cells, go through whole publication, I microarray or whole genome sensing. We can decode the whole genome of the fetus. And this is how that the single cell picking technology work out. out. Once it's identified by confirm with her, laser dyson will cut the flow lower. Sticky finger shoot up to pull the substrate for our single cell analysis purpose. It's very reliable, very effective, effective and wishing in house. house. So, so we start from testing these fetal, fetal cells from maternal blood carry male fetus. It's very, um, it's just for, for a simple reason. We could, see, we could simply the Y chromosome of, of the cell in the maternal blood, no blood uh, fetal, fetal cell marker. So if, if a male fetus, you are going to, going to isolate male circulating fetal cells and then you see Y chromosome from the procedure. And the problem came to the point of, of how you isolate, isolate a, if the mother, mother carry a female fetus, how you know this is a, a fetal cell you isolate? Because uh, when you do whole genome sequencing, you just you just see a chromosome, a, a duplicate of chromosome. So in that, we, we perform short tendon repeat, the fingerprint, fingerprint uh, for, uh, forensic testing. So this is a, uh, we have to draw, uh, this is a fetal cell genetic signature. That's a short repeat uh, sign signature. And this is a uh, maternal blood. At the same time, we, we obtain maternal blood. So you could see this maternal short tendon repeat fingerprint actually half, half match to no blood, half, half match paternal blood. This is very reliable. You could merge to paternal <laughs> uh, forensic testing. At the day, uh, 280 day, 80 days be childbirth first. So it's very, very powerful. So then we start to move to um, maternal blood with confirmed trisomy uh, genetic uh, dis uh, uh, 
genetic abnormality in fetus fetus. Those patients are pre screened using circulating, circulating or DNA technology. Then our physician identified this patient, draw their blood. So that's the reason when the blood delivered to, to us is usually is in the, in the semester. And we do yeah, generally uh, uh, collect this blood blood before they are elected to get the abortion process. These are the four uh, I saw, uh, Down syndrome sample, fetal Down syndrome sample. We collect the uh, maternal blood and precisely detect, detect duplication, actually, actually triplicate uh, of trisom trisomy, uh, sorry, uh, chromosome 21. One, two, these two are female, these two are male. We see the um, um, chromosome 2021. This, this example show we could de detect uh, trisomy 18, also known as Edward syndrome, and trisomy 13, 13, 13 duplicate, 18 duplicate, blood circulation, and uh, 16, and then the 22 weeks of gestational age. And now start to enter our unique collection. This is a very unique sample, and, and we detect trisomy plus, plus, Education of of a white chrome. Okay, so so this we call white boy. So this uh, uh this white chromosome got duplicated, and later we actually was able was able to obtain some um cord, and we carry out each study on those fetus and confirm the genotype observed by microarray match with uh, genome type detected by, by uh, fish technology. This is the other unique semi sample quarter quarter ball, and just basically a white white chromosome duplicate okay, four times and confirmed by fish. And the other unique uh, sample also demonstrating the power of this uh, single single fetal sedation tool. Generally speaking, it's easy for circulating to DNA approach to detect. Um, a uh, whole uh, duplication of the uh, whole chromosome, uh, COVID number, T number like, change, uh, like chromosome, uh, uh, like a trisom, uh, trisom, trisomy 18, 13, 21. When they have so short the deletion and the duplication in the DNA, that's in fact constitutes the other the significant portion of a, gen of a genetic abnormality in the fetus. So we also demonstrate is this very unique example. We dig in the same fetal cells. We observe uh, genetic deletion of turn, uh, chromosome, chromosome 9 and the short frame, frame and patient in chrom chromosome 14. And this later confirmed by the fetal uh, uh, umbilical tissue sequencing. Quickly review the, te the technology we imprinted the, nan the nanobiocro A. That's allow, allow us to isolate single circulating fetal cell, circulating trophic blood cell. Then we we'll isolate the single cell to perform a whole genome sequencing to detect genetic normality. And this, and this paper was published in 2016, ACS name. And I'm delighted that this paper now start to gain a pretty good attention. And many research groups have also been able to follow our premium premium data not only for circulating plus, but also some of them of them branched the use of use of fetal nuclear ray, ray blood cells. And I also appreciate my collaborator at UCLA uh, and the Cedar Sinai Medical Center, that is uh, Dr. Angela Chen and Dr. Margarita Pisaska, and our collaborator over the overseas, uh, Li Jin Chen and, and Dr. Min Tsai. So let me quickly re review that technology and give you a consensus now developed in the field for this uh, single circulating fetal cell based prenatal diagnostic, diagnostic technology. It's indeed, indeed very prompt, but the but limitation uh, encounter uh, at this point is it's just uh, so difficult to reliably recover this uh, single circulating tumor cells. So, so, so that also right. say now the best, best performance demonstrated by, by us Dr. Bode at the uh, college. So right now our successful rate, rate is about 7%. And if we cannot push it to 90 plus 95% successful rate, 
the port for this technology now just become price relatively low. And so many pe people work on calculation of the circulating tumor cells. And you can see they slowly branch out to address this issue, um, um, the circular cell issue in, in the NIP. So we look, we're looking forward to more work, join, join force to at the forefront of, of this uh, uh, fetal cell based uh, diagnostic uh, application. And we definitely see um, um, it's a circulating trophoblastic, this NIPD -like approach to only give it, give it the, um, we have the capacity, capacity to isolate most pure, pure fetal fraction of the genomic material for genetic testing. Also, because it's so pure, allow you to do micro deletion and duplication, which is, is difficult to achieve by, by circulating fetal gate approach. Of course, the other advantage also, also remain. And potential concern about the circling trophoblastic mosaician issue as a result of fast division of uh, fetal cell on the, on the placenta. And this is also, is also known, noted in the, in the field. The more and the more people, people try to adopt this single cell, cell technology to isolate a circular fetal nuclear red blood cells. But we want, we want, we hope to see more solid, solid reproductive data on that, on that forefront. So this quick, quick consensus share with the audience. And I think, and so if you're interested in working in the field, and this could be kind of a, a quick summary, summary about the, the frontier the peer development in the so I'm going to share share with you the third the section of my presentation, which is apply the first generation nano vehicle vehicle chip to the circulating in trophoblast and use the number number of circulating plus for, for the diagnosis of uh, aggressive um, maternal disease called placenta accreta spectrum disorder. A quick a quick background. Uh, P or uh, PS is a placenta creta spectrum. And so this, uh, uh, this is how the disease look like. This is uterus. Okay. When the placenta overly invest, uh, not invade into, into the layer of the uter uterus, it's often penet penetrate and lead to severe, severe bleeding um, during, during the labor process. So and the diagnosis of this uh, uh, aggressive invasion of the placenta into uterus currently is done, is done by atom and the magnetic, magnetic resonance MA imaging. The problem is that this confirmative diagnosis can only be confirmed at the third trimester. And so in order to better help our physician to prep this, uh, 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 the management of, of this aggressive disease, so the way so we hope to de detect it early. And this is a, a different degree of a PS disorder. The most uh, uh, aggressive the type is, uh, we call it, uh, we, we uh, it's termed the, the percreta. You could see this uh, is a placenta completely penetrate the muscle layer of a uterus. And this is the reason um, after the delivery of the baby, placenta cannot be, se be separate the uterus then often will have to, to oh, could lead to a, a, a fatal outcome of the mother. So previously we demonstrated we could isolate single fetal cell for, gen for genetic test. And now we, now we want to use the same phenomenon to see if we could, we could use the number circulating trophoblast to detect aggressive placental implantation. Okay, means penetration placenta into uterus as well. This is a very bloody image. image. See, this a placenta, placenta penetrate, almost penetrate the, the, the uh, muscle layer of the uh, uterus. And you could even be visualized from outside of the uterus. Very bad disease. So our general idea, idea is if you look at uh, uh, this uh, in, invasive uh, implantation of placenta, this kind kind of somehow remind us how the cancer, how a tumor invade the normal tissue, tissue, right? So you could use the, use the circulating cell to mo to monitor tumor progression, aggressive number of, of uh, tumor uh, tumor spread, and can we use the same technology technology to monitor 
is a, is a aggressive placenta, uh, uh, placent implantation process. So come to our first generation technology and circulate circulate was shares the same same mark most of of the episode uh, or origin the tumor cells and we actually took the first sample from dr yada pisaska and we we observed very unique and unique and striking we we not only see more circulating trophoblast tr cell in the maternal circulation in the patient with a ps disorder and this uh, circulating trophoblast cell aggregate, aggregate to form this we realize there is, there is a need to hand the morphology of the cluster in order to facilitate allow us to better characterize the device. So we went back to use a placenta. Uh, set, set, uh, well, this is actually, it's actually a cell line, but they are they, um, for blood cell tumor. So we utilize to capture them in the speed formation condition. That's a way we generate cluster to, to mimic the cluster in the blood circulation. Then we spike them into the PBM, PBMC from Helena. Then we minimize our flow, flow rate at different parameters of our device to make sure the cluster before spike and the after capture onto the nano vehicle, we could read their, their morphology feature features and that the uh, um, um, SCM is showing how all singles in the classes inter with our vehicle growth device. So with this optimized condition in mind, in mind we are the establish a solid cohort of the patient. We are study cohort in the Los Angeles with a patient sample coming in from UCLA Health, uh, Health uh, Hospital with uh, some sample from Seal Sinai, Sinai Medical Center. We also, we also work with University of Utah. Their medical center is, is one of the biggest um, uh, PS disorder research center in the United States. So we work with my, my previous uh, physicians since they went to China in, in Shandong and Shanghai, sending sample to our testing site in the Shenzhen. All the image after the chip image, the count, counting finally condensed to the UCL, UCLA and to form this study's design. Divide 160, 168 patients into training set. Then we have an independent set coming in and, and compute, compute, divide this two cohorts, cohort seven. These are the different, different slow circular for plus in green. In green. Two cell class cluster, A cell cluster, 15 cell cluster, and we have, have more, and with this almost more than 100 cells of clusters are observed. So when we come when we conclude that 160 patients divided in, into PS group previa, which, which is a high risk uh, PS patient and no more pregnancy. And the data um, um, the high data conclude, conclude the overall trophic plus plus number, cells number. Then the bar indicates those, those cells are in the clusters. So then we run a simple uh, uh, box chart. You could even, even visual could see the PA distinguish itself from, yeah, and the no, normal pregnancy. And, and clusters in a better diagnostic, give us a better diagnostic power. So this is our uh, um, validation then data. So we have our tra training set. Then this training, training set itself can go through so-called lib one, one out the cross validation. And both showing very similar area on the curve with a, with a almost a nine five diag diagnostic power. And when we, when we couple with the data set uh, in our testing, set, although data reduce, I mean, power of the diagnosis reduce a little bit, However, um, the results still pretty, pretty disappointing. We could actually combine the of our CTB cluster data data uh, with the ultrasound result we tend at the red red later stage of our pregnancy, and we could separate our cohort into red early stage of uh, a disease, a disease which are, which are which are the time 
most most re, most badly need this technology to help uh, diagnosis. In actual first and second trimester, we actually uh, our data combined with ultrasound show 0.998 around the curve. Strong diagnostic, diagnostic potential for detecting in PS. So um, we had just a um, uh, couple of weeks ago, this paper was published in the Nature Communication. This three colleagues, uh, it's, uh, Dr. Afsha, who is who is the first author who, who approached to me the idea of uh, using circling trophic blast to detect um, uh, PS disorder, and that was four years ago. And Dr. Yu who is a, a pathology training and, and now is a faculty at the UCLA Pharmacology. And she is instrumental behind all the study design and also statistic analysis. And Dr. Pisaska from, from Cedar Sinai Mentor. And she just, um, I mean, she, she, uh, Dr. Pisaska, Dr. Pisaska and I, we held uh, a U01 grant. That's a, uh, originally uh, applied for a single cell cell. Uh, a, gen a genetic test, and now now we use it for you know, this uh, PAS detection. So together we had this team and published this paper, and this uh, also highlight the unique environment we have at UCLA. So one campus we have we have interdisciplinary people people who work to close close together to use technology as important biomedical issues. Okay, so and quickly quickly reviewed all the results, results I share with you starting from the, from the platform and uh, history and applying one generation of a technology for single cell analysis, showing the, the potential non-invasive pre prenatal tests to detect, detect tricyclic down syndrome. And also we repurpose the use of this single cell technology simply fo focus on the capacity of a cell counting, we detect the cluster of the cell. We could use it to, it to predict those uh, uh, PS order. With that, I'm going to close my talk, talk and I bet about this at uh, the technical difficulty about the uh, echoing of the audio. And, and I thank you so much, so much for the opportunity and any questions come. Thank you. Um, excellent talk, Dr. Uh, Sang. Appreciate it. A couple of things. When you're capturing CTCs, what is your, uh, like how many cells are you capturing? What is the total cell number? It varies. Um, and so vary not only with the disease uh, stage, but also with a different type of a tumor give you different uh, number. But uh, the, the, the couple number I could share with, share with you is um, probably, probably is a one. Okay, I mean, I mean from nothing. Oftentimes you have a, you have a benign disease, red is red, red early stage of disease. You see not nothing, but at the relatively aggressive uh, disease phenotype at, at the late stage of disease. For example, example we work, we work on, on the uh, uh, neuron tumor in, in pancreas with um, Bacini at the uh, and endocrinology. And in those cases, uh, if we see cluster, we often can see hundreds of cells, of cells in the maybe a two, two milliliter. There's a, there's a pretty wide one of the range. Um, which stage of cancer, uh, is it stage three, stage four that you were able to capture or is it stage one? And you could see in, in some type of cancer, stage one disease, the, those phenomenon, those cells, the number are very low, and the observation that then becomes become not very reliable because you are with yes or no, so no, black and white. But, one, but once it's too late age of disease, you, you see more, and that reproducibility is better. I see. And another question is uh, you can use other silicon technologies. Why don't you go with polymers? Is it for surface chemistry or? You know, you can do silicon nanowires, other things. We actually, for enumeration purpose, we like the silicon nanowire because, uh, because uh, we favor it within our, our UCLA navigation facility in contemporary semiconductor aging method. 
So the reason we like semiconductor method because it's so reproducible, okay? However, for the second gen generation technology, we need to isolate, isolate this. We need to chop the flow, flower, then pull the, pull the flow out. So then we, then we need the transparency. So if the substrate is not transparent, we cannot cut it. So if we use the silicon, the laser light, or those uh, um, fluorescent, fluorescent light is to work in, in conjunction with the cell cutting technology. We use a laser to, to cut. So unfortunately, we have, we have to go through the uh, polymer. And that actually hit an interesting point. I have to confess, uh, using, using this uh, quote-unquote quote material, we indeed encounter, encounter the difficulty of uh, the, dev the device becomes reproducible. The fabrication itself of a device failure rate also become higher. So this is kind of a, a dilemma we have to we have to kind of a trip off because for the for the purpose of option. Um, regarding EPCAM, do you think it's the best marker for capturing CTCs, or are there other markers? Well, I think uh, uh, I will say, you know, working in on a capacity. You, you use a single marker, probably it's going, going to give you the better cell specificity. And definitely everybody now, now move to the so-called multi-marker multi cocktail. But your difficulty will raise is if you use more capture agent, you will encounter the issue of bringing more background cells. So, so this is again a trade-off where you, where you want to rotate, rotate your, to have a, have a more sensitivity or more specificity. And this depends on your application. So if you your purpose is isolate single cell cell to calculate them, you, you don't you don't want to touch background. And now we now we include use less surface marker marker, probably epic epic long. But if you want to want to capture all for clean purpose, I would I would encourage you to use more surface marker curves. Thank you. Also regarding uh, uh, do you believe in cancer stem cells? Is your technology can capture cancer stem cells, which some people believe they're the main cause of metastasis? And yes, I think in uh, NGH group, uh, they just spend a lot of energy studying the, the stemness of the cell, the cell, especially within the in the circulating tumors, and they and they have um, and they their study actually actually suggests stemness uh, uh, the cancer stem cell theory actually indeed contribute to part of the CTC biology. And we, I'm not, I'm not a cancer biologist. We, we unfortunately will not go too deep, deep in that arena. I see. Another question is, uh, you mentioned um, chromosome uh, detection using Down syndrome uh, from the blood again. Uh, do you have to lyse the cells or? Uh, you know, it's you isolate, isolate the single cell. And I, I probably go a bit too fast. Um, let me go back to slide and you will see. And I, you are welcome to look at that the 2000, 2016 days nano paper, paper. That the entire work, workflow after we isolate the single cell. Okay, we're here. You, you can see we actually lice it. Okay, we not only lice it, we use a single cell whole genome amplification kit chop the DNA into to fragment, then do whole genome amplification. In fact, in fact, although it's a single technology over here, over here, we always pull three C cells in one well, in one end of tube, in order to ensure reproducibility of that the whole genome and publication process. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's all the questions I have. Uh, one more time, one more time. I, I see a few more questions. Um, um, what is the volume of sample input? Generally speaking, we use a two milliliter of one chip. We still, we still do that. List. And, and for two milliliter of blood, we always, always remove ray blood cell, cell by either lysis or gradient centrifuge. That will bring the PBMC volume down to 500 microliter. The 500 micro, microliter sample shoot into our, our device. That capacity overall volume within our device is about 20 microliter. So very much we feel the device 25 times times in one row. So that give you give you kind of a numerical spec of our device. 
Thank you. Also for capturing, did you use aptamers or polyaptamers? We did a few publication in the aptamer. And I think aptamer definitely is a good option uh, for Seltzer, especially for this type of occasion. But unfortunately, we did not use that uh, aptamer coded device to conduct large scale of body. And you know, this device used to use the cell line in story. When you apply to a clinical cohort, like what we demonstrate for uh, the, the PS disorder detection, if you don't run, run a clinical cohort, you never know how, to, how they perform at the end of the day. day. I see a final question. Um, looks like you, are, you can selectively capture cells from blood. Have you thought about using your chip for dialysis type of, or sepsis type of application? This, this kind of question we've been asked multiple, multiple times. And I would say, but say poor blood to do a, a in vitro diagnostic is always easy. easy. But if you want to build the blood, then connect the patient, circulating all the blood you dialysize or you, 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 you get back to patient. patient. That's a different story. Bar, bar is much harder. And so we're not ready to take those challenges yet. But theoretically, yes, we could do that. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. That's all the questions I have. Thank you for your time for this fantastic talk. Thank you, Unity. And we'll connect. We'll connect. Hope to soon. Bye. Yes. Bye-bye.